Hello, my name is Justin and I'm a library associate at Harold Washington Library and I'm going to show you today how to make a felt patch. And then in part two, my colleague Ava will show you how to use many of those same materials to decorate your own t-shirt. So the first step is deciding what you want your patch to look like. I have this gray felt square, so I was thinking, oh, maybe I should do an elephant. But the problem is I'm not the best at drawing freehand. So I just decided to Google pictures of elephants, and then I found one, and I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to trace it onto my felt square. Now I'm going to trace this elephant onto my felt patch, but I'm going to flip it over to do so. That way, if I have any extraneous pen marks, when I'm done and I flip the patch the right way, you won't be able to see them. You can see there, he has some pen marks from where I messed up, but flip him over the right way, he's a cute little elephant. There are all types of things you can use to decorate your patch. Sequins are great, rhinestones are great, glitter is great. Just make sure you have some kind of covering on the table because that stuff will get everywhere. If you got this kit from the Chicago Library, it comes with two different colors of puff paint, a 3D fabric paint, and it comes with a fabric marker that you can use to texture, color, and shade with. We can do something like a nice border. Um, so I'm gonna do something like a little dotted border. That way, if you're not great at drawing straight lines like me, that's okay. You don't have to be even or exact. It's part of what makes it look nice. is a fabric marker, which you can use to create shading. So for example, I've shaded the elephant's trunk there. I could also shade the feet if I wanted to, just to add a little bit of extra color and dimension. So then maybe we'll outline the back a little bit. As you can see, we've added a little bit of shading to the bottom there and to the trunk. Another thing that can really spruce up your patch are some rhinestones, and you can affix these in a few different ways. You can use some hot glue if you want, or what some crafters will use is a glue called E6000. Just be aware though, the fumes from this are pretty toxic. So if you are using E6000, you will wanna make sure you have a window open or that the area is well ventilated. And then so you'll just add your glue, put on the rhinestone. You can pick them up, but sometimes they can be rather tricky to manage, especially if you have thicker fingers. Um, so what I like to use are these wax tip jewel setters. They have a wax on the tip. And what you do is you just, you would put your glue down, you would press the wax onto the top of the rhinestone and it picks it up and would allow you to place. So I'm just gonna use some hot glue today. We just need a tiny little drop. A tiny drop will go a long way. So just, you want to be careful not to burn yourself. Just a tiny little drop. And then I'm going to use this wax tip jewel setter, pick up my jewel, and it makes it much easier to place. And you're at less risk of burning yourself. So now I've placed a little eye there and then I can just peel off this string and now you can see we have our elephant. Now if you want to attach it to something like a shirt, a backpack or whatnot, you can sew it on with some needle and thread and we actually have a radical fit tutorial which I'm linking right above here. Uh, or if you want, you can always attach it with some safety pins which if you got this from the library, the kit comes with some safety pins that you can use to just poke them out you'll weave it through and then attach it onto whatever you want. 
Now that you've seen how to make your patch, my friend Ava is gonna show you how you can use those fabric paints and fabric markers to design your own t-shirt.